morning. Good morning. God is good, amen. Yeah. Do I have an usher come to give these out? No, yeah, he is. Okay. I will be the usher today. We will have brought some music tomorrow, but yeah. Yeah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You are worthy of all glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your house today. We come with grateful hearts and obedience to your word. And Lord, we ask that you would be pleased with our worship. Father, your word says those who worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. And we are here today to worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We ask now, Lord, that you would bless this service, that our praise would be acceptable unto you, and that your word would go forth. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's turn it over to our worship team. Hallelujah. Good morning. We greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one of these uh, old songs. We ask that you stand on your feet, leave your chairs, and greet our congregation and say, Bless, Lord, oh my soul. God bless you. Oh God bless your worship this morning. This song says, This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine.
Patricia worked tirelessly beyond normal limits despite extreme personal sacrifice to further the kingdom of God, to be Jesus to the Jewish community, and to promote the state of Israel and the Christian support of Israel and the Jewish people worldwide. I love you, Patricia, and I miss you already. Until we meet again in the New Jerusalem, or perhaps in the air, first. And this would hit me really hard. I worked with Patricia, even though she was in LA, Burbank. She would come for a season for several years. I was on the phone or text messaging or emailing with her almost daily. And uh, she loved this church. She loved this church. And she loved me and Pastor Fonda, of course. And uh, I know she's with the Lord, but that doesn't mean I know that. Anyway, she fell. She was a diabetic. She wore a pump and she was on dialysis the last couple of years, but this did not to her for taking care of her mother who was injured. She had the dialysis installed in her little condominium and in her mom's house so she could go back and forth and take care of her mother three or four days a week. And uh, when she was, I guess, home, I don't know the details, she fell in her shower and she never recovered. So, to this week. So, that's all I know. And her funeral is this Friday. So, uh, pray for me. I will be going down to be with the family. Amen. Uh, praise God. But she has a reward. I had another friend of mine at New York say, why are you crying, Timothy? You know she's with Jesus. I said, I know. Yeah. I know she's with Jesus. Amen. Uh, and boy, he saved her in for great is your reward. She was that type of person that did things behind the scenes. She put every event together for thousands and thousands of people. She would raise millions of dollars for, for Christian work. And she never put her name on anything. And she never wanted to be acknowledged. She just stood in the background and watched it all come together. And he, he saw, he saw. She has her reward. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I could write a book about Patricia, but I'm not going to take any more time. I'm going to ask the minister Deb if she would come now and bring the announcements. Um, Julie normally does this. And if she was here, she would say, Ron, happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, there will be ongoing construction in the pastor's office and the downstairs auxiliary rooms, what used to be our nursery and children's area. Please refrain from entering the area even if the doors are unlocked. It is not safe to have members or children in these rooms until the remodel is complete. So we look forward to that and we just thank the guys that are doing it. You know? and that's Ray and Bill and Ed and, and there's a few others that I'm not sure. But yeah, make sure you, if you see those guys, thank them for helping. Okay? We need volunteers for the fireworks stand. Um, so if you are able to help with the fireworks stand, see Barbara. Barbara Young. Vacation Bible School has been postponed to a date yet to be determined. Again, that's because of the construction. And there will be no Bible studies on Wednesday until further notice. Because Pastor wants to make sure that the focus keeps on the construction. All right? We need volunteers. A coordinator to coordinate and recruit volunteers to clean out the storage container. And volunteers to actually work with the coordinator and get the storage container cleaned out. We need able-bodied people, both skilled and unskilled labor, willing to help senior dad, Ray or Young. And Pastor Johnny, oh yeah, Pastor Johnny's helping too. And don't, not to miss you, I'm sorry. I know, I apologize that I didn't make it up. 
then I'm popping them out to them. If you don't have 35 cents for a stamp, then give it to me with your name and address on it. Okay? I don't mind the mail. Be happy to mail it for you. But uh, so, so take a, take a, a label and put, or, a, or a write a name on the label in any way you want and start it going back around to the service. And uh, we want to grow the kingdom, amen? Yeah. We want to get more people to come to church, amen? Yeah. So that they, uh, and some that we, uh, that we know should be here, that aren't here, get on to them. So if you know somebody in your family that used to come here and they're not coming, just peel one label off, yeah. Just peel a label off or else you can, yeah. Oh, I'll show you how it works. Okay, this is the Bible we'll show you. Okay, and then, because they're hard to write unless you have a sharpie. And because they're glossy. We usually use labels, but let's get around. Yes, Sister Michelle. I have a whole bunch of labels at home I can bring. All right, well, Michelle's going to bring more labels in case you need them. And uh, I just want you to start thinking one uh, one person, you know, a week. Another little, here's another little idea. If you go for a walk, how many know walking is healthy for us, right? If you go for a walk on your own street, or if your street's real short, go to two streets. But even if it's a short street, go for a walk on your street. Take a handful of these. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave some in the back always. And pass them out to your neighbors. But here's another thing you can do. Is you can write, you can write in that little space below, and you can get a Sharpie. I wouldn't get a Sharpie at home. And you can write, um, I want, I'm your neighbor. My name is Judy, and I'm here to pray for you. Please feel free to call me. Whatever you want to put on there, you know? But you can start your own little ministry to your street, you know? To your street, to your neighbors. You know, last night I had a new neighbor, and he came over, and I said, I said, give me, what size shoe do you wear? He says, 11. I said, praise God, I have a friend that went on to glory, but he left me a bunch of size 11 shoes. You, you, would you like to, to choose a pair? And so he came over to pick them out, and I said, you know, at the church, we like to try to bless people that are working as well as people that aren't working, because we know the working man needs to break once in a while, too. And uh, so I got to minister love to him and invite him to church. He's not here today, but, you know, one of these days he might come to church, you know? So uh, it's just kind of like how we, we do the food ministries as well. So... This, you know, we're, we're going to have these. I've got 5,000 of these. I want every one of them to go to a person. And then I'll order 10,000 more. Then we'll have twice as many people here. And we'll have to get more out, right? Amen. Amen. And, and when you come in to service on Sunday, try to fill the first four rows, okay? Because uh, it, it's nice for the video camera if we have a, a full church. When, when people see from that point up, they see the first three or four rows. And it's nice. It, it shows up good for our church. That's another thing you can write the YouTube search on there. W, you know, just VTFWC. You can say, watch us on YouTube. Can we pray for you? I think one Sunday we're going to have, we're going to do a prayer meeting where we read all the prayer requests that come in from our postcards. And we'll sit out a prayer request postcard and we'll read them. And the people that want to watch on YouTube and they don't want to come to church, we can pray for them right here. And we can call it out whatever they want us to do. Amen? Amen? We want to reach out to the world. Amen? Pray for Pastor Sample and Shulai Ministries. They got to a Saturday night service, and right now they're out in the community past somehow doing outreach. Amen? So we want to undergird that work. It's our sister work. And Pastor Sample even said, you know what? If we run into Sunday people, we'll send them over to your church if they want to come to church on Sunday. So, you know, he's a kingdom builder, not just a church builder. Amen. So, we want to build the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. We're going to be working with Pastor uh, Riggins at Bell Pastor Union Baptist and trying to get some of the other pastors on board. And uh, we haven't figured out just what God wants us to do yet, but we're working under the, the umbrella of city's pastors. And we're trying to get the pastors working together to support the ministries in this community. Amen. 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 We know if every church that, 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 that benefits from TLC Soup Kitchen gave TLC Soup Kitchen $500, she'd have her budget for the year, you know? And a lot of their members get a lot more than that. Amen. So uh, we just, 
the different things like this. We want to, to encourage in the community. We're to see give it home. Amen. We believe in missions. We believe in missional missions. Amen. So, can I hear praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. All right. Let's welcome Pastor Father as she comes to bring today's departure. Be healed in Jesus' name. Messiah, the Avenger, thought for the weak. Messiah is our Redeemer. He has redeemed us from slavery, from sin, from condemnation, and from death. He is our kinsman Redeemer, our brother in the house of God, who has ransomed us from the debt we could not pay. Therefore, we speak of him as Redeemer. He is also the national Redeemer of Israel. Just as Moses, the first Redeemer, redeemed all Israel from slavery, so too the second Redeemer, Messiah, redeems the whole nation. And this great second redemption is not only a spiritual redemption, but it is the literal, physical redemption of Israel. He will gather the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from the nations and restore them to the land of Israel. The blood avenger himself shall put the murderer to death. He shall put him to death when he meets him. Numbers 35, 19. Messiah is the redeemer of Israel. In the Bible, the job of a kinsman redeemer includes taking blood vengeance. Therefore, if Messiah is to redeem Israel, he must also avenge Israel. He will require recompense in blood for every drop of Jewish blood that has been spilled, and for every drop of his disciples' blood, whether Jew or Gentile. Psalms 110 says, He will judge among the nations. He will fill them with corpses. He will shatter the chief men over a broad country. He will drink from the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he will lift up his head. Psalms 110, 6-7. Psalms 9 and 12 speaks of God as the Redeemer, the blood avenger. When it says, he who requires blood remembers them, he does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Psalm 79, 10 says, why should the nation say, where is their God? Let there be known among the nations in our sight vengeance for the blood of your servants which has been shed. The implications of Messiah coming to avenge the blood of Israel is frightening when we consider that the church has been historically the chief spiller of Israel's blood. In the name of Christ, literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands, even millions of Jews have been ruthlessly killed through the centuries. The book of Revelation depicts the souls of martyrs crying out to God for vengeance. How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And they were told that they should rest for a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed even as they had been would be completed also. Revelation 6, 9-11. In Deuteronomy, the Lord says, Vengeance is mine and retribution. Deuteronomy 32-35. The prophet Isaiah assures us, Take courage, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Isaiah 35, 4. All of these texts combine to paint the dire picture of Messiah's second coming. When he comes again, he comes as the avenger of his people. I'm just going to sit on that one for a minute. 
Think about that. He had Christ coming to avenge the blood of his people and all the saints. I was at a prayer meeting one time and I was praying from for some little children that were being abused. And I knew they were being abused and I was helpless to help them. Besides reporting, as a, you know, pastors are uh, mandated reporters. But I knew that just reporting them would not do very much good because it had already been done. And uh, they were still in this place where they were being abused. And I was praying for the Lord to come and avenge, and be their avenger. And you know what? I saw a vision of him coming in his glory. And he was writing, he was, he was bigger than life. And I, and I thought when I saw that, him, he said, he spoke, you know how he speaks to your heart? He said, that's why I'm coming. And he said, and I looked up and I saw this beautiful vision of the Lord coming in his glory and his power and his might, like he's described in the light. And I said, oh, this world is in for a big surprise because he's no longer the meat lamb of God. I mean, he is still our lamb and the sacrifice for our sin, but he's not coming in that form again. He's coming in his might and his glory and his power and this world will not be ready for him. So, uh, his children will. <laughs> Hallelujah. We used to sing a song called The King is Coming. The King is Coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and soon his face I'll see. The King is Coming. Oh, the King is Coming. Praise God, praise God, praise God. He's coming for me. Let's sing it together. Let's sing it. The King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding. And soon his face I'll see. The king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He's coming for me. you worship me before we receive our morning worship and tithes and offering.
the witness. Yes. I think my burden is down there. I think the two of you are down. Pass the phone and the two of you are down. Amen. Did you leave your burden to the Lord? Did you pick it back up again? single dad, 
remember you have a father that loves you more than an earthly father or mother could ever love you. If you've lost your parents, you still have a heavenly father that loves you. Let's stand this morning and let's continue in prayer and let's continue with, oh, and also remember you have, see Pastor Timothy, if you have an ATM that you want to give your tithes just by swiping your card, you can do that also. Hallelujah. It's very easy. There's no excuse to not pay your tithes and offerings. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for healing us, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for being our Father. We thank you for being there for us every moment of every day. 24-7, Lord, we know that you're there for us. We know that if we need to be picked up, that you carry us. We know that you walk beside us. We know that you sometimes walk in front of us, Lord, but we know you never walk behind us. Lord, we just thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives, and our pastor, for the vision. Lord, we ask that you would keep each and every one of us safe. Put a shield of protection around about us, Lord. Father, we know you're faithful and just to just take care of us. Our, the food on the table, the roof over our heads, Lord, the roof over our church, and you provide everything for us. And Lord, we're just so thankful in Jesus' name. We just thank you so much in your precious holy name. Amen. Bless you guys. Right? So, as I begin my practice, 
It wasn't much longer, it wasn't very much longer, and I got a raise at work, okay? Just about two months later, I got a raise, and my raise was to $1,800 a month, but there was a catch. I, I, got, I got permission, all right? $1,800 a month, but then I was gonna get a commission on all of my sales, my entire list of sales. The first month I got my commission, I was on my honeymoon, and I'd go to check my bank account, and my commission was $800, okay? So what, what was my 1800 plus eight? 26. I thank God a double tithe, and he gave me a double income, amen? And it went up from there, you know? I said, we're gonna keep paying our double tithe. And do you know, I remember one day uh, coming home from work, uh, and my wife was pregnant with our first child and she had quit her job. And I said, we've been faithful. So we're gonna ask the Lord to increase my business and my income to not only cover what you used to make, but give us extra. I said, by the time that baby is born, God's gonna give us more than we had with you working full time. Now, my wife made $3,200 a month to start with, and then she got a raise from there. So she was the big bread learner when we got married. But she wanted to stay home and raise a family. So I said, we're going to trust God, and he's going to do this for us. You know what? He did. By the time she gave birth to our first son, I had been recruited to another company, and I was making, I don't going to tell you how much, but it was a lot more, a lot more than we made together. In fact, I remember coming home from, uh, if you if you care that much, you can figure it out, but you'd have to do some research. Coming home one day from <coughs> from work, and remember the O.J. Simpson trial? My wife said, oh my goodness, I realized something. I said, what did you realize? She said, we are blessed. God has really blessed us. She said, they told how much money that attorney, Marsha Clark, made, that prosecuting attorney, and you make the same amount as she does. And she's a world famous attorney. And I said, God is good. You know, I didn't have the education of an attorney. You have to go to about 10 years of school to be an attorney. And uh, four years of law school at least. Some people take the five, and then you get to pass the bar. And God had blessed us and blessed us. By the time I came, to Victory Tabernacle. I had left my first church, God had moved me up into the foothills, and for a short time we went to a second church. And when we moved, God said, leave your tithe behind. I had it on a direct deposit, because I didn't trust myself. The more I made, I wanted to make sure. That, you know, it's easier to write little checks than it is to write big checks, you know, even if you're making more, right? So I had it on direct deposit. I didn't even have to give my money at church from my paycheck to the church's bank. And the Lord said, don't change it to your new church up in the hills. I want you to add it. So I added it. Guess what? God doubled my income again. And by the time I came to Victory Tabernacle, God had blessed me beyond measure. So, and even though the devil comes in and tries to steal, God has never, ever, ever let me beg for bread. Amen. He's always taking care of my needs one way or another. And so I just give God all the glory. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you to, to be faithful to the Lord because he is faithful to us. Amen. Amen. For the will, good to see you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, our Samoans, they have a special for us today. So I'm going to invite them to come now and to minister. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, thank you for the opportunity, Pastor. I just wanted to share um, a short encouragement before we sing a, a short um, song. Our way of ministry is obviously singing. And we only sing in church. <laughs> we sing in our bedrooms or, or we just sing to each other. But thank God for his mercy that we're able to sing and worship with you all to the glory of God. 
I just wanted to um, uh, share alongside our uh, giving um, encouragement today. This whole week, this past week has been a roller coaster. Amen. Amen. And I believe you have your own roller coaster you wrote. But I thank God that um, when it comes to the downside of it, he's right alongside us. Amen. When we share about the downside of our families, it just puts out our business. But I know that, you know, it's not only our victory family, but whoever would be watching this on YouTube and I, I just hope it will be an encouragement. This past week, God is blessed financially and spiritually, but when you have that blessing in your hands, you tend to forget God in that. And as a minister for God, as a front row minister, all I expect you to be perfect. But as I heard today, an encouragement for our our offering says that give it to the Lord. Don't doubt him in your tithing. He will bless you. That, those are the only words I caught in my mind. Because as I came this morning, I doubted God. As a Christian, you're not supposed to. But we're human. I am human. But as I stand before you this morning, I thank God. to my life to worship with you. That's pretty much the main reason for our we have been created for to worship you. Amen. 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 My Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Amen. Sing with us if you know the lyrics to the song.
You see, life is worth living because our Redeemer lives. Amen? Amen. Uh, I have a special request for us. Uh, I would like uh, each one of us this week to go to the, the, the card store. Uh, either the dollar store or the grocery store or something and buy a sympathy card. This, there was, there was a shooting in a gay bar last night in Florida and over 50 people were shot and killed. This morning. This morning. I got the news this morning. I didn't know it was this morning. Maybe, I wonder if it was in the middle of the 53 deaths. Oh, 50 killed and 53 injured. See, I don't watch the news on Sunday morning, but I, I receive text messages. Yeah. Where? Where? Orlando, Florida. Worst kid hate killing in history. And it was a Muslim. You know the the the, the religion of peace. It was a Muslim. I found it uh, ironic that the media took the death of one great athlete and turned it into a commercial for Islam. And then following this commercial for Islam, we have a horrific hate crime in the name of the false god, Allah. I'm here to say Allah is a false god. It's another name for the moon god that was worshipped at the time of Muhammad that they call the prophet. It's not the same God. Just because everybody wants to hold hands, it's kumbaya. That doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it true. But as Christians, we have a responsibility to reach out in love to those who are hurting, whether they know Jesus or whether they don't know Jesus. And I just have it on my heart that the gay community feels like we hate them because what the Word of God talks about the way we're to conduct our lives. I don't want to be known as a church or a people that hate anybody. I want to be known as a church and a people that love Jesus and, and love all of the people that need, need Jesus in their lives. And so I would like each one of us here to write out a sympathy card. We don't have to know the names. And I'm going to send them to the people who are in charge in Florida from our church to let them know we're praying for the families that lost loved ones. Amen? God, and uh, in times like this, I'm not, I'm not trying to teach a new doctrine, but I just feel that God hears our prayers before we ask them. Because God exists outside of time. And I, I don't believe in praying people out of purgatory or doing anything like that. But I do believe in praying for the lost, that they come to know Christ. And since when Jesus died on the cross, it was 2,000 years ago, but he died for our sins today. And the word says that when we sin today, we crucify him fresh. That tells me that time doesn't matter that much to God. It only matters to us. So I want to pray for each one of those young people, probably young and old, that lost their life. Let's pray that one of them called out to Jesus. And that they all saw him and they all called out to him. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit moved upon them in that moment of crisis. And that their grandmas and their mamas and their daddies that prayed for them, their prayers were answered and Jesus revealed himself to them. Let's pray that right now. And let's pray that they call out to him. So that, and let's pray that our families, their families, will be comforted by the Holy Spirit. And by the fact, knowing that people in the body of Christ still love them and care and we care about them. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We pray for your, your Ruach Kodesh, your Holy Spirit, to and to comfort the lost, to comfort those that are mourning the loss of their loved ones that were massacred in that bar, in that shooting, in the name of the false god that, that so many turn to and call Allah, Lord. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you, Almighty God, Lord, that exists uh, outside of time. You're the creator of time. 
in you are all things made, and we're all things made in you, and you hold all things together. You are in all things. You are those that he, you are he that was and is and is to come. So Lord, we know time doesn't matter. I don't know how this works. And I don't know, I, I don't know anything except for that you are a loving God, Lord. And that we pray, Lord, for those young people and those old people, all the people that were shot in that barn, Lord, the ones that lost their lives and the ones that are recovering, Lord. And we ask that in their moment of, of before they made their final destination, Lord. May you look upon the hearts of those that were good and maybe disconfused. And Father, Lord, that you, that even right there in the bar, Lord, Lord, that you would move upon them, Lord, and that they call out on the name of Jesus, just like the thief on the cross, because none of us are righteous, and all of us need you, Jesus. And we don't seek out anybody's sin, but everybody has sinned, and we all fall short of your glory. So, Father, I pray for the the, the men or women or, or both that were killed in that gay bar. And we ask, Lord, that they would have, that you have mercy on them, Lord. That they called out in your name, Lord. And that you saved them just like because, for God, you so loved the world that you gave your only son, Jesus, that whosoever believeth on him, whosoever should believe on him, should be saved and have everlasting life, should not perish. Whosoever believes in you should not perish, but have everlasting life. For you did not come, Jesus, into the world to condemn the world, but that through you the world might be saved, Lord. For we know that those who have not called upon you are condemned already, but you are the lover of our souls, and you love each one of those that perish. And you died for them. So, Lord, we ask that you would have mercy on their families and on their those souls. And you would have bring comfort and peace. And that most of all, that the members of your body will reach out to those families and with your love. And we can show them that we are the people of God that love, not judge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So bring those cards next Sunday. And we'll mail them off. We'll make sure they get, you know, to the people. And uh, I just, as I was sitting there, I was just, I said, what can we do? We're, we're in California. What can we do? Well, we can send cards of love. We can send cards of support and comfort, you know? We can tell them we love them and, we, and we're sorry for their loss. Amen. What can we do? You know, my friend Jim, my godfather, not only my friend, my godfather, Jim Shimon Aaron, every day he got up and he said, what can I do today for God, and what can I do today for Israel? Do you ask yourself when you get up in the morning, what can I do today to build the kingdom of God? Amen? Isn't that an awesome thing to ask? Isn't that an awesome thing to do? Amen? Brother Cleo, you want to encourage the people before we, we bring Brother uh, Watts up? Lord, I want to say a word of encouragement. What's God putting on your heart? We're going to have Brother Cleo preaching in here pretty soon. But you want to just encourage the people for a moment and tell them what God's put on your heart this morning. Holly. Most of what God's put on my heart this morning is what Pastor was talking about. Holly. You know, I uh, I got a, 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 a movie yesterday. Yes. And I watched it on television. And it was it was the movie, and it showed and what in that showed in that movie was uh, the incident with uh, the lady that's running for president. Uh, what happened in that uh, for the men of the, and women that was overseas that lost their lives? It was the most horrifying movie I've ever watched in my life. If you get a chance, you want to you want to take a look at that movie. Uh, it. Uh, it, it just wrenched my heart. And I know uh, I was thinking of one man in there, and he called his wife, and he was talking to his wife on the phone, and he and uh, she said, and, and the daughter spoke up and said, "Daddy, we're going to McDonald's, then we're going to Disneyland." Mm -hmm. Now this man was in the last moments of his life. They was ready to chop his head off in this movie. Uh, and so if you get a chance to get it, I, I mean, I will get this movie and watch it. Uh, maybe I'll bring it in to you, Pastor, and let you watch it. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, this world, I'm telling you, 
And it's 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 so heart wrenching. It's so heart wrenching. Our churches, they're so they're so heart wrenching. Uh, I see so many churches now that, that used to were, were love God and, and now they seem to, they, that they've moved away from God. They're not they're not with God anymore. They're teaching other stuff and doing other things. They don't have their heart set on God. It's it's America is falling. Yeah. And you know, and I blame it myself. I blame it on the churches. Yes. I blame it on the church because if the church is strong, then this then the United States will be strong. Yeah. Yeah. But if we yeah. lose yeah. it in the church, yeah. we've lost it all. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Here, Pastor. I have raised a little thank you, Brother Cleo. If my people, right. which are called by my name, it doesn't say if the lost. If my people which are called by the name, so humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. He's talking about his people, us. Then will I hear from heaven, will I forgive their sins, and will I heal their land. Do we need a healing in our land? Do we need a healing in our land? Do we need a healing in our land? Are we God's people? Then we can do that right here, and we can do it every week. We can do it every day. We can keep turning and seeking His face and calling upon His name, and maybe it'll catch fire. Brother Will, do you want to give an encouragement or talk or, or talk about uh, September 16th for just about uh, two minutes? I'll talk up to you. Thank you, Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, our nation, as the brother is saying, our nation is evolving to a place of judgment. And judgment begins in the house of God. Yes, it does. And the 98, I wrote a book called Bastards in the Pulpit, based on Hebrews 12 and 8, that says if you be the one chastised it, you be bastards in our sons. In our pulpits, if you bastardized, you have men, you have women, you have people who take the pulpit and they use it to teach a false doctrine, and they use it to gather people to themselves, yeah. and they have turned their back on the truth. Now we should not be surprised, it was foretold that this would happen in the last days. In the last days, men shall gather to themselves teachers having itchy genes, and they have turned their hearts from the truth. Thank God that we can see and know the truth. And so God has called me to bring this message to the stage on September 16th. We are keep us in your prayers. It's a warfare. It's a yes, battle. Yes. You know, and when God calls you to something, when He calls you to do a work for Him, you know, it's not a pop. It's not about being popular. It's about being obedient. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's that's the highest form of worship. It's not a song. It's obedience. It's a lifestyle. When yeah. God tells you to do something, do it. He tells you to pray, pray. He tells you to feed someone, feed them. Yeah. Just be obedient. And so I just come to prayers. I just thank God for Pastor Hebo here. Yeah, he's friendly me. We connected with each other. And, and um, what God has called me to do, I just feel a camaraderie Amen. with him and with this place here. So I just encourage you all to be fearless in whatever God's called you. Because our name is written in the only book that matters. Amen. And that's the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. We don't have to be afraid. Let's do all that. So that when we stand yeah. before him, we will not be ashamed. Amen. We yeah. must stand before him and give an account for our life. Mm -hmm. Not just that our name was written in the land of the life, but what reward will we receive when we go into heaven? Amen. Uh, what reward are we going to receive? Are yeah. we going to be ashamed? Are we going to make it just by fire? We got to put the fire up. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to show for our salvation. So I encourage all of us to get busy for the Lord to bring forth fruit before him on that great and mighty day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. We will be supporting that in whatever way God directs. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a number of tickets uh, that we're going to be purchasing and contributing uh, so that we can go as a church on September the 16th and we can see this play together. Amen. So put it on your calendars and start planning ahead of time. Amen. So uh, put it on your calendar. We'll get you all the information later. But uh, put it on your calendar. And remember, uh, we're, I am believing God. I am believing God, Brother Cleo. I am not going to be discouraged about what our nation is doing, you know, what the political realm has been, 
But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe God, and we're going to do our part. We're going to, we are going to humble ourselves and pray. And we're going to seek His face, and we're going to turn from our wicked ways, each one of us. And we are going to see Him heal our land in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. He would have saved Sodom and Gomorrah if that would have been just ten righteous. You know? Just ten. There's more than ten here, so we can be a force. We can be the righteous. We can be the remnant. And we need to grow the remnant in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Remember that old song, Pastor Johnny? I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Amen. We're going to stand firm for Jesus. Amen. Let's welcome our Johnny Worldwide as he comes today to bring the word of life. The word of life that will go forth and accomplish the purpose God has for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus. I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for your blessings, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your not in your grace, Lord Jesus. Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to look upon your people's Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to look upon the bereaved families right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus, hold your arm of mercy around them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them where they're weak, Lord, build them up where they're torn down, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus, as I come before you, Lord. As I decrease, Lord Jesus, you increase, Lord Jesus, with your words, Lord. For your people's Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord. Thank you right now and praise your holy name, Lord Jesus. These blessings and others, we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our topic for today. Up from the grave, he rose. Praise God. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and Mary. the other Mary to see the scripture. And, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from the heaven. And came and rolled back the stone from the door Man. and set upon it. Yes, Lord. The contestant was like lightning, and his remnant was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Mm -hmm. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Yes, Lord Jesus. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. Mm -hmm. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, yes. and he, hold, he goeth before ye into Galilee, there shall he see him. Lo, I have told you. Man, praise God. And they had departed quickly from the scepter with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. Holy and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see you. Man, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go and tell my disciples that I have risen from the grave. And, and we can take time and think about it. While he was in the tomb, he went down into hell and looked upon his people's head. Taking the key 
from Satan that he might not be able to unlock the locks that are locked. And uh, we got to realize that if Christ risen from the grave, we want to be able to rise from the grave when that first trumpet sounds. When that first trumpet sounds, and that let us know if we want to rise on that great day, that means we better get ourselves together this day and time and be ready when Jesus comes again. Says so soon and very soon, I'm going to see the king. And Jesus Christ and the Almighty God is there yeah. waiting for you and I on that great judgment day. I want the Lord to say, well done, my good and faithful service. Enter into the kingdom of God. When Jesus rose from the grave, he rose for a reason. That we might have the right to the tree of life. Yes. And when we have the right for the tree of life, that means we have to give up all that is in us to be able to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. We can't say, well, I will, I think about it. No. Be real about it. Give your life unto the Lord. Not halfway, not part of the way, but all the way. Amen. That we might be able to draw somebody from the streets or somebody from the grocery store or somebody from the clothing store to be able to say that I am one of God's chosen children. Able to see Christ, that I might be able to walk with Him when He comes back. Yeah. 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 I want to be able to walk with the Lord. I want to be able to ride when that tr first trumpet sounds. Yeah. I don't want to be the ones He says depart from me, for I know you not. I want to be the ones He says come with me into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Where there's nothing but milk and honey. Yeah. But if you miss it and you go below fire on top of fire. Mm. If for water, ha -ha, he'll bring you a flame of fire. If for bread and he'll bring you a brick. But in heaven, milk and honey Howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. But down there, you'll be begging and crying out for your soul to be saved. Yeah. But when you turn it all over to Jesus, he'll work it out. He'll work it out. Our problem is we try to work it out. But when we work, try to work it out, we make a bigger problem out of it than it was from the get-go. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And then we holler, oh Lord, why is taking you so long? And the first thing he's going to answer and tell you, when I tried to, you grabbed it and tried to fix it. Now it's going to take me just a little bit longer to get it together and get it fixed like it's supposed to be. That's the reason why we got to turn everything over to the Lord. Let him work it out. Yes. We can't work nothing out. God can. Yes, yes, yes. When Jesus rose from the grave, he had everything in his hand. And we are his disciples. Amen. We are his disciples. 
and we want to be ready when he comes. That's the reason why he gave us an opportunity to go into the streets, the highways, and byways to tell his people, tell the people about God, what God can do and what God will do. If you have a testimony, yeah. tell God. Tell the people what God has done for you. Yeah. Where God has brought you from. Yeah. He picked you up out of a miry clay, set your feet on solid ground. Yes, that you might have the right to the truth of life. Amen. Amen. And if we do what God says do, we won't make no mistakes. But when we decide to do it on our own and by ourselves, that's where the mistakes begin. Turn it over to the Lord. And if you have an opportunity, lay on the altar and leave it there. When you turn it over and give it to the Lord, He'll work it out. It may not be when you want it worked out, but it's always right on time. He's an on time God. And then that means if he's an on time God, that means we have to be on time. We have to be on time. Because God is a great God. Everything that we have, it belongs to him. The clothes you got on your back belongs to him. The shoes you got on your feet belongs to him. The house you live in belongs to him. The bed you sleep in belongs to him. The food you eat belongs to him. Automobile you drive belongs to him. The gas you pay for belongs to him. Everything you need, God has got it. God has got it. And when God has it, you don't have to worry about it. Because he will do all things. And he won't hesitate about doing what he's going to do. He's going to be right here. He risen up out of the grave he came yeah. that you and I may walk with him yeah. in the last days. Yeah. And this is the day and time that we got to pray more than we ever prayed before. Looking at the news and everything that's going on. The Bible said before the end of time, man's going to destroy his own self. And you look at it right now, and it's already taking place. Far and near. Let let us know if we belong to him, we got to pray. And we got to go out in the highways and byways and let these people know that God is soon to come. And people don't understand. They don't understand that God has your life in his hand. He has your life in his hand. And if he's got the little tiny baby in his hands, he know he's you know he's got you and I in his hands. And if God came up from the grave to pay a price that no man can pay, the price that he paid, you and I would have never been able to pay. Because he took all sin. Upon his shoulders. Yeah. He is stretched out upon the cross. Hands nailed, feet nailed, torn crown on his head, pierced in his side. Yeah. But
But he still said, I'll pay the price. I'll pay the price. If Jesus hadn't died on the cross, where would this world be? Where would we be? That's the reason why we got to depend on the Lord. All day long. All night long. And a lot of people don't understand this day and time. When you tell them, says, I'm blessed. And a lot of them don't understand what you mean when you say that I am blessed. I had a young man at a clothing store pass by and he spoke and I said, I'm blessed. I said, what about you? And I kept walking. He said, sir, sir. I said, yes. He says, woo. And he go, oh, oh, okay. I says, anytime now that anybody asks you, how are you doing? I said, the word should be, I'm blessed that comes out of your mouth. I said, because God didn't have to wake you up this morning. I said, he could have let you come continue to sleep. I said, some got up this morning, some didn't. Some are still in the bed that can't get up. I said, but God gave you the opportunity to rise. Breath in your body, activity of your limbs. To be able to go to your job to do what you're supposed to do. That's why he raised up from the grave. To give us the opportunity to live for him. And for him only we shall live. And if we live for the Lord and let him lead us and guide us in the right direction, we'll make it in. By and by. Because through him and by him, all things are possible. And that's the reason why we have to depend on the Lord. Just remember, up from the grave, he rose. And through him and by him, we can walk in joy and peace. When we got him in our life. Without him, we're not going to have no joy. We're not going to have no peace. But through him, all things is possible. That's the reason why we have to depend on the Lord every day of our life. Because he is our only way to make it into God's kingdom. Into his kingdom. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, oh, 
Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 